If there's one company that's making pretty great products in the PC space, it's actually Huawei. Now it took quite some time for it to reach our shores, but we finally got our hands on it. This is the Huawei MateBook E. Now it wasn't too long ago that I took a look at the ASUS VivoBook 13 Slate OLED. In fact, I took a look at it twice. To sum up my experience, it wasn't the best and I had quite a few suggestions on what it should have been to be a little bit more competitive. Little did I know that Huawei has been doing just that all along. The MateBook E is a hybrid device just like the Slate OLED but features up to an Intel Core i7 just like the Surface Pro. Exactly what I wish the Slate OLED should have been. But does that mean that you should get this right away? Well, not quite. Let's first start by talking about the design. First of all, it's a pretty large tablet and decently sized laptop. It comes in at 12.6 inches and weighs about 700 grams. Yet despite the thinness just shy of 8mm, the MateBook E does actually come equipped with a fan. This is by no means a fanless design. A con for some perhaps, but a pro in our books for sure. At the time of filming, it is only available in one colorway, Nebula Grey, and it's as simple as it gets with just a small Huawei logo adorning the back. The matte finish is a nice touch however, helping to lessen fingerprints a little bit while providing some extra grip. The back is also where you'll find the 13 megapixel rear camera, complete with a flash. The overall image quality is pretty good and depending on your use case, you might find it useful. Arguably however, that front camera is far more important and thankfully, it's pretty great. It uses an 8 megapixel sensor, so giving you pretty great image quality, and the microphones aren't half bad as well. The only slight downside is that it doesn't support any form of authentication, so it's definitely not perfect. In addition, the stuttering that you're seeing right now in this recording, it's only for this recording. Not entirely sure why, but it's just because of Windows and how it deals with recording and stuff. But don't worry, it's going to be smooth, you're going to use this for Discord, Zoom, Google Meets and as such. No worries. In a nutshell, it's a pretty neat and minimalistic design that I pretty much prefer. But we now come to the display, and this is arguably the highlight. It's a 12.6 inch OLED with a resolution of 2560 x 1600 at 60Hz, a max brightness of 600 nits, support for P3 color, and of course, support touch. I might sound like a broken record by now, but honestly, I have nothing really much more to say except that it's a beautiful display that you will definitely enjoy. Colors are rich and vibrant, the blacks are deep, the high resolution is really nice, and it's bright enough to use outdoors without worry. The only downside is that I wish it was capable of 90Hz, that would have made it much better, but still a fantastic display nonetheless. The other thing that's pretty fantastic and a genuine surprise are the speakers. There are a total of 4 speakers, each located in each corner and just like the MateBook 14S, this has been tuned by Huawei which they call Huawei Sound. Despite the size and form factor, the speakers can get pretty loud without distorting and they sound great. To give you a little bit of context, they sound much better than the newest iPad mini, really close to the iPad Pro and definitely much better than the Slate OLED. So 2 thumbs up here. But then we have to talk about a smart magnetic keyboard and unfortunately, it's a thumbs down here. The overall typing experience is fine and the trackpad is pretty large with NFC support to boot so you can easily place down your Huawei smartphone right on the trackpad and easily connect the two devices to share files and more. However, what I really don't like is the way the kickstand mechanism works. Unlike most other hybrid devices, you flip open the top half and pull it all the way down. Technically, it's the same result, but the annoyances start when you try to adjust it. Naturally, you will have one hand on the device itself while your other hand adjusts the kickstand. While angling it down is fine and all, the moment you try and prop it up, you'll pull the device off the back instead. That happens far more often than I would have liked. Additionally, the magnets aren't really strong enough to support the weight of the MateBook E itself. If you attempt to close it by holding on to the accessory, it will actually pop off and fall flat. Not ideal for sure. Now the cons kind of continue as we talk about the battery and the port selection. The MateBook E has a 42 watt hour battery and I could generally get just under 6 hours of battery life from normal usage. It's not fantastic for sure, especially with how you use this very device. As for ports, you get a single Thunderbolt 4 port and a 3.5mm combo jack. You also do get your power button with a fingerprint reader as well as your volume rocker. While Thunderbolt 4 is very much welcome, that is also pretty much all you get. But enough talking about the cons, let's now talk about something that's arguably as important as the display itself, the performance. 
So, an Intel Core i5 1130G7, 16 gigs of RAM, and 512 gigs of PCIe 3.0 SSD storage. Now, to be fair, the Core i5 is only configured for 9 watts, which makes it lower than the typical configuration of 15 watts. But even then, this can push some decent performance. So, we set the power profile to performance and ran Cinebench R23. It managed about 2800 on the multi core and just over 1200 on the single core. This might not sound like much, but if you compare it with the Pentium N6000 Silver from the Slate OLED, that's more than a 50% uplift in performance. Needless to say, we tried some gaming as well at 1080p. For CSGO and Valorant, this is actually more than capable. Able to push above 60 frames per second with few hiccups or major drops in FPS throughout our gaming sessions. Genshin Impact on the other hand was basically unplayable, achieving only about 2 frames per second. In short, it's purely meant for light gaming and light gaming only. So stick it to Valorant, CSGO, Dota 2 and as such. As we talk about temperatures, it's really well controlled thanks to the presence of a fan. Around 70 degrees Celsius at most for the most part, with the CPU drawing the full 12 watts and pushing 2 gigahertz. So here's the thing about the MacBook E. It's basically almost everything that I would have liked the Slate OLED to be. It's got a great OLED display, that hybrid form factor, but yet it does pack the performance to run slightly more demanding applications and handle day-to-day -day tasks without hiccups. And despite it not being a fanless design, the fans are still pretty quiet under load, really reasonable. So does that mean you should go out and get this right away? Well, not quite, because while it is definitely more powerful than the Slate OLED, you are also paying a premium for that. The Slate OLED with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of SSD storage goes for about 1200 Singapore dollars or 750 US dollars. While the MacBook E will set you back 2000 Singapore dollars or approximately 1400 US dollars. That's about twice the price. Which, if you're simply looking for a secondary device to bring around occasionally and such, the price might deter you. But it is without a doubt that the MacBook E is the better performing device, and you'll definitely appreciate the smoother day-to-day -day performance. The Huawei MacBook E was was honestly a genuine surprise and it's far more capable than you might initially think. So if you're in the market looking for such a hybrid device, we would say that at the very least, shortlist the Huawei MateBook E. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. If you'd like to, do check out the affiliate links as well. If you do, thanks for the support. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. Till the next one, see ya!